During the harsh winters of World War II, rain and snow were as deadly as bullets. Entire camps froze solid, supply caches drowned in mud, and makeshift shelters leaked so badly that blankets turned to ice slabs overnight. Soldiers depended on tarps for survival. Those simple sheets that covered trenches, shielded weapons, and kept men alive through nights colder than steel. But what happened when even the best tarps wore out, tore apart, or simply ran out? Factories couldn't keep up, and frontline troops were forced to improvise. Out of this desperation came one of the most overlooked survival innovations of the war. Waterproof coverings made not from new materials, but from recycled fabric, oil and wax. Handcrafted solutions that outlasted factory-made tarps and still outperform modern synthetics today. When the front lines ran out of tarps, soldiers began to invent their own. In the chaos of war, logistics often failed. Supplies promised by command rarely reached soldiers deep in occupied territory. By 1943, both Allied and Axis troops faced shortages of rubberized canvas and waxed sheeting. The British Home Forces, dealing with wet, freezing conditions, began collecting worn-out uniforms, truck covers and tent scraps. The secret wasn't just in the fabric, but in how it was treated. Soldiers brushed melted wax or linseed oil over layers of cotton, burlap or jute, then hung the fabric near campfires to allow the coating to harden into a protective seal. The resulting sheets repelled water, resisted mildew, and could be patched or recoated endlessly. Now, American engineers working out in the Pacific, well, they used a similar approach with parachute silk, coating it in beeswax mixed with motor oil. It actually created lightweight yet watertight coverings that kept rations, radios and sleeping gear bone dry through weeks of tropical rain. You know, soldiers didn't need factory chemicals, just basic field materials. Paraffin wax, linseed oil and animal fat all worked as waterproofing agents because, well, they solidify within the weave, binding to the fibres and sealing them permanently. British engineers used boiled linseed oil since it hardened into a durable, rubber-like surface. Meanwhile, German troops on the Eastern Front Facing those brutal sub-zero temperatures, mixed pine tar and wax into diesel oil to create a coating that stayed flexible even when frozen. It gave their canvas half-shelters, the famous Zeltbahnen, a level of water resistance that, honestly, plastic sheets today can barely match. The U.S. Marines took the same method even further, reusing flour sacks and burlap coated with coconut oil and charcoal soot. It created natural insulation and camouflage all in one. But, you know, the real genius was that these improvised tarps could be maintained indefinitely. When the surface dried or cracked, soldiers simply re-waxed it with whatever grease or wax was available. For modern survivalists and off-grid enthusiasts, these wartime methods are not just historical curiosities, they're fully practical techniques. Honestly, anyone can make their own recycled tarp using materials that would otherwise be thrown away. Start with natural fabric. Old canvas bags, denim, jute rice sacks or cotton curtains work best. Synthetic fabrics don't absorb oils or wax, so they won't waterproof properly. To prepare a waxed version, 
you know, melt some beeswax or paraffin in a double boiler, then brush it evenly onto the fabric. Gently heat the coated cloth with a hair dryer or over the sun to help the wax soak in. Once it's dry, the fabric becomes stiff, smooth and fully water repellent. Now, if you prefer an oiled version, mix boiled linseed oil with mineral spirits in a one-to-one -one ratio and brush it on. Hang the cloth outdoors for several days until it cures. The result is a supple, flexible tarp with the waterproofing of rubber and the durability of canvas. For those living in wet regions, combining both methods, first waxing, then oiling, creates a nearly indestructible covering. This approach, well, it mirrors what soldiers did when protecting machine parts or rations on long campaigns. They needed materials that could survive rain, sleet, heat and friction without breaking down. These tarps did exactly that. Modern polyethylene tarps have their place, but honestly they degrade quickly in sunlight, make noise in the wind and can't be repaired easily. In contrast, the WWT-style waxed or oiled fabrics grow tougher over time. Scratches can be resealed with heat, and small tears can be patched by melting a little wax into the damaged area. They're quieter, more natural, and can blend into the environment, ideal for campers, preppers, or reenactors who value durability over convenience. There's also the question of longevity. Plastic tarps typically last a year or two at most before UV light destroys them. A single piece of wax canvas, however, can last decades with minimal maintenance. That's why field oilcloth, developed under wartime scarcity, became the foundation for modern outdoor gear. Everything from wax jackets to expedition tents traces its lineage to these same principles. Even in post-war Europe, civilians continued the practice. Farmers used old oiled sacks to cover hay, while fishermen coated sailcloth in linseed oil to create waterproof boat tarps. This legacy of resourcefulness became part of everyday survival. Proof that necessity during war often produces the best long-term inventions. For anyone living in flood-prone areas or preparing for long-term off-grid living, learning this old craft could make a real difference. A six by eight foot sheet of wax canvas can replace several layers of plastic sheeting. It can serve as a roof, a tent ground sheet, a food cover, or even a solar still base. Because it's breathable yet waterproof, it prevents condensation, a problem that plagues modern camping tarps. If treated properly, it can also resist rot insects and mold, making it ideal for humid climates. The key is reapplying a thin coat of wax or oil every few months of heavy use. Soldiers in the field used to do this by rubbing candle wax onto their covers and warming them near a flame. That same method works just as well today. What soldiers learned during World War II wasn't just how to stay dry. It was how to adapt. They turned waste into protection and scarcity into survival. The recycled waterproof tarp is more than a clever improvisation. It's a symbol of resilience, a reminder that the best tools often come from knowledge, not abundance. A tarp made from recycled wax fabric doesn't just keep you dry. It connects you to a legacy of ingenuity that carried men through some of the harshest conditions in history. Whether you're a historian, survivalist or craftsman, understanding how these forgotten methods worked gives you something far more valuable than a factory-made tarp. 
Self-Reliance. For more in-depth stories about forgotten wartime innovations that shaped how we live, survive and prepare today, subscribe to Echoes of Valor and share this episode with fellow history enthusiasts. Every forgotten invention tells a story, and sometimes it's the simplest ones that kept entire generations alive.